Next up is council initiated discussion. Um, we have been, NHGRI has been the driver on this uh, agenda so far. And at this point, we sort of open the floor for comments from the council members. So this is an opportunity for you to request reports or updates about some of our research programs. We also regard you as uh, representatives of the research community. So if you are aware of problems or troubles that are brewing in the field, you can bring those to our attention as well. What's your pleasure? What would you like to hear from us? Yeah, a uh, couple of things. One is that at another event I attended, I can't even remember what it was now. Um, well, I remember the content, I just don't remember when or where or anything. Uh, we had a presentation from Alice Popejoy, who's co-chair of the Clingen Ancestry and Diversity Working Group, and maybe Sharon knows more about this than others. But um, it was really quite interesting. It was part of an NHGRI funded consortium um, and talked about um, implementing the polygenic risk score program that NHGRI was uh, supporting, as well as for general consideration of diversity in genomics and other omics studies and talking about um, those types of, of information, given that this is an interesting area. I was thinking it might be worth hearing from her or someone in that group uh, in terms of what's happening in this, this specific area, in, in including potentially returning results from a genetic polygenic risk score. The other thing that I, I wondered about, this is more recent, is in my conversations with some institute uh, directors and so forth, you know, I, I understand there's a trans NIH uh, thing going on now about COVID-19 and particularly not involving the diagnosis or the characterization of the, the different types of, uh, of bugs. But what's happening after a person has COVID uh, and particularly with respect to uh, ideas of, you know, can what is it about the, in terms of memory loss or heart or lung or other types of features that occur after COVID infection? And since there's a big international effort trying to identify you know, genomic input or genomic effects in terms of who may actually be more susceptible to COVID infection or severe complications, Maybe that's something that also genome is involved with, and it'd be worth understanding more about that. And maybe Eric knows can provide more information on this trans NIH thing that's happening now. So there are, yeah, I mean, I can tell you there's definitely major efforts. I'm not sure it's trans NIH, but it is multi institutes that, and some of which have gotten funding for this. So I think there are some major initiatives being stood up in that area we could find out exactly where they stand and whether it might be um something worth bringing to the next council meeting for updating i see terry just popped on maybe she knows a little bit more yeah the, there is a notice of intent to publish a funding opportunity for this year um so it's moving very very fast on post-acute sequelae of um of COVID, and you may have seen or heard of that steve uh it's in the in the nih guide it's a, it's basically a heads up to the community that there's going to be a very fast turnaround solicitation so so that's led by nhlbi but it is uh, you know almost all of the institutes are involved including mm -hmm. ours right you said it much more eloquently than I did. Oh, I'm sure not. <laughs> okay, I've got Sharon, I've got uh, Jonathan, then Sharon, then Howard. Okay, just a, a, a quick thing. It, it um, over the, the, the last year or two, we've had a number of programs that are wrapping up and being essentially being sunsetted. I mean, Caesars one and, and the, 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 the common disease centers are another. Um, so it might be good once they wrapped up to get a sort of a final report from those folks as to, you know, what the, what the programs did and, you know, all the presumptively, and, and I'm sure they are all the successes that they had and all those kinds of things, but it would be 
it seems to me it would be good to get a final sort of a final report on some of those some of those things, even if I'm not here to hear them. Well, we'll just schedule them in open session, and then you'll hear them. Then I'll hear them. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure I don't know exactly what the timeline is for any of those programs, but that would certainly be a reasonable thing for us to do. Sharon. Well, I'm in the same position as Jonathan, so this is a recommendation, although it's my last council. Um, we, at the genotype to phenotype conference, it first came up sort of the enthusiasm for data visualization funding. And there was actually an interesting discussion about it on Twitter last week, which reminded me about that those grants are actually hard to get funded. Um, but, and as I mentioned, the comp website, I mean, more and more Nomad just updated their, um, their website as to ClinGen. I mean, how we visualize the data that we're generating, I think is increasingly important. So maybe having some type of discussion about data visualization research, I don't know, across NIH or what NHGRI, I know it's mentioned a couple of times in the Nature article, um, but any specific plans about really work on improving data visualization of the work we do, I think, think would be a useful topic. To just follow up on the comment about Al Alice Popejoy, so she's the co-chair of the Ancestry and Diversity Working Group. The PRS work is actually coming out of ClinGen's Complex Disease Working Group, and there's a paper coming out quite prominently uh, quite soon on the ClinGen polygenic risk score assessment, essentially a new standard for assessing them. So that might, and Jen uh, Wachik, who's now at Hopkins, is the chair of that committee. So that might be an interesting topic. Okay, Olga. Uh, I want to agree uh, with Sharon's suggestion on data visualization. I think it's actually something that might be very challenging to do right, because of course there's uh, the two extremes of very technical data visualization that's done in the computer science community that sometimes can go away from how are the users in the NHGRI in the genomic sphere are going to do it uh, versus you know, basically doing something that really doesn't have any uh, technical carefulness. So I think it is really worth thinking about how to do it right for our community. And we're getting to the point where we have the value added by not just visualization, but visualization, search, exploration, right? Visualization interactive with analysis could be uh, very important. Uh, and I think the related to that, potentially uh, thinking about what are key priorities in terms of features that software and frameworks need to have um, for an HDRI. And perhaps this is too general uh, as a general question, but I do think there is something in addition to what topics they're needed for or what goals they're needed for, but also what do they need to have, right? When you put the next RFA out for a center, do they need to provide the data with metadata in some way that's convenient? Do they need to have a certain level of visualization, et cetera? Okay, I've got Howard and then Jeff. Go ahead, Howard. Uh, I want to ask a question about the IGVF program, which I know is just starting. So this program looking at a variance on genome function. Are you getting a strong response in terms of applications? Are they from the usual uh, suspects? Just want to get a sense of your, and, uh, that your thoughts on the community's response to that new framework. So uh, these applications are under review and we don't typically release information about the number of uh, responses that we've gotten. I can tell you our review branch is busy. Jeff. Yeah, this might be a stretch, but it would be, uh, I'd love to hear uh, perhaps later this year if we could get Eric Lander uh, in uh, or uh, Alondra Nelson to hear about how the new uh, advisory structure, how the cabinet level office is gonna work and uh, sort of what, their, what do they see as their priorities and portfolio. I could pull on some old relationships there to see if we could uh, get special treatment. It's worth a shot. Anyone else? Rudy, can I ask a question at council then in this? Go ahead. Yep. Well, I, one of the things we are way behind on 
Um, and in part because of we've shortened council meetings because of the pandemic. So we've not been able to have as many presentations in open session is we typically have um, new institute directors come and give a presentation, giving council a chance to meet and talk to them and look for areas of potential synergy. And I just was counting, and you know, we've had a, a, a recent um, surge of new, mostly external uh, directors hired by Francis uh, to lead various institutes. And we were already behind before the surge, but I'm counting, there's, there's seven new institute directors that have never come talk to our council. And I would say at least half, if not two thirds, maybe even all of them, but you know, have significant genomics relevance and programs that we'd be interested in talking about and all that. So I don't quite know how to dig us out of that hole. I don't, I, I'm not necessarily, I, I'm not necessarily asking you in an open session to say, oh, I wanna hear from this one, but not that one. Cause I mean, there might be some preferences amongst them, but, but maybe you could just think about it. And if you have ideas of how to try to catch up, um, you know, I'd like, I'd like to hear that. But I, I really do feel there'd be some productive conversations with some of these um, uh, directors and they'd probably be very eager and interested based on conversations with me to, to get to know our council a little bit as well. So I just put that out there. How do you have a response? So Eric, I think um, we'd like to hear your views and uh, views from other people at the Institute regarding opportunities or common challenges that you face with other institutes uh, where it might be uh, especially informative to have that type of session. Okay. Other ideas or requests? It's certainly a long enough list that will keep us engaged. May Council is only three months away, so we'll scramble. <laughs> 